you know, with our feast that we celebrate today, along with Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, you know, I just was thinking like how it would go over if my siblings main thrust was to try to please their children all the time. Like that was their main thing was to just to, to please them and always have them be at every moment content. You know, I was just thinking of like how often they ask for ice cream and I mean, just nonstop. And if they just always relented, if their main goal was just to always please them, how would that go over? What goal? I mean, in the immediate term, it would go over well for the, for the kids. And, but it, it's no way to parent, obviously. In the same way, you know, as Paul's writing to this very early Christian community, and he's talking about the struggles that he had in Philippi, but he drew courage through the Lord and the Lord speaking to him. And he says to them, it is in the same way, he says, to be, he says, this is how we speak, not trying to please men, but rather, but rather God. You know, like if, you know, it, you know, so, so like for Paul or even for me, if I were to live in the mindset, even preparing the homilies on the weekend of just like in the mindset, what would be the best 10 minutes to please these people that I'll be speaking in front of? these 1,200 people this, this coming weekend. That, that would be a different, if my audience, if you will, was you, it'd be just completely different mindset. It'd be a completely different approach versus Paul, Paul saying the, our audience has got to be God, to please God, not men. We, we celebrate today a day of somebody being beheaded. We honor it. John the Baptist. Why? Because, you know, he didn't want to beat Herod over the head and those to say like, you know, just shame on you. You know, you shouldn't be with Phil. You shouldn't be with Philip's wife. No, it's like you shouldn't be doing this because it's bad for you. And not only Herod is it bad for you, it's bad for Philip, it's bad for his wife, it's bad for the children, it's bad for the community, it's bad, it's bad and the ripple effect just goes on and on and on. Sin is bad for us. That's why God hates sin. God hates sin because it's bad for us. You know, and then, you know, Paul's, Paul's later in the letter says, but you just notice the tenderness in which he approaches. He says, he goes, we were gentle among you and with you as a nursing mother cares for her children. The gentleness there. You can almost see Paul just drawing in and getting real close with the community, just being with them. And it's summed up beautifully in this last line and says, with such affliction for you, the desire, the love that Paul has, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel, but our very selves. You know, and I don't know if you had an opportunity to, to see the saint murals that we have up in the church offices, but all those quotes are very intentionally, you know, chosen, I, I think especially needed for our times. And one, one of them, you know, from Edith Stein, you know, she says, that's up on the wall, the quote is, do not accept anything as the truth if it lacks love. And don't accept anything as love if it lacks truth. You know, I think that's, it's beautiful words to, to, to live by. And, you know, I think maybe just a question for us today as we turn to the, to the Eucharist and receiving him. And it's like, who's my audience? I always need a guard up against checking myself. Who's my audience? Am I trying to please men? Am I trying to, to be in a spot where it's like, I hope people like me. That feels a lot, that like, feels good. When people like Father Mark, it feels good. When people don't like Father Mark, that does not feel good. It's actually really painful. But who's my audience? 
Is my, is my goal to please men? Or is my audience God to, ple to please him? Paul says, don't have our audience be men, but have our audience be him. So Lord, help me to always have you as my audience, to please you rather than men.